Adobe takes the high road with its brand new Firefly text to image generator. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and that is it. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a, I would say a video photo day. We're gonna be talking about Adobe. They just created a brand new product called Firefly and it is in beta as of today. And if you want to get involved in that beta, what I'm gonna do is in the description as well as the pinned comment, I'm gonna give you a link. You can go directly there and get on the list for becoming a beta tester for this software. So as a side note, I did place myself on this list, but remember, I do not use Adobe software at all. I deleted all of it when I did the Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord series two years plus ago, and a lot of you have came on that journey with me. If you wanna see any of those alternatives that I created with the Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord series, maybe I'll put a link over here to those. But at any rate, I was reading an article over on Petapixel. I wanted to share that with you, and I'm gonna give you some commentary and my thoughts on what Adobe is doing here. Now, bear in mind, I did a, let's say a negative story on what they were doing at the time. I'll put a link to a video right here that I did, and I talked about how they were basically stealing your information. You were allowing them in through their TOS or what you signed up for that was allowing them to use any of your images that you had in the cloud with Adobe for their AI learning, right? So I did that video and I guess this one is kind of like they're taking the high road now with this Firefly and they're saying, oh no, we don't do any of this. We are above everyone else and this is why. And that's kind of what this is all about. So let's take a look at this and then I'll get more into my commentary and what I think about it. And more importantly, I wanna know what you think about it. But before we get into this, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, go check them out. They are 100% free. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. If you enjoy this content, even in the least, consider throwing it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you are subscribed, Click this little button over here so when I go live and when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you just wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, little thank you button right down here. YouTube gave that to us. Thank you, YouTube, for doing so. You can click that button and give a dollar or two if you'd like to help support this channel, or if not, that's great too. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. So let's get right into this. I'm, I like this story a lot because it gives an idea of where we're going with this whole AI thing. And since Adobe is that major player when it comes to us creatives, right? A lot of folks, millions and millions of users use Adobe products, not myself and hopefully not you either. But if you do use it, you are one of the millions that do. And Adobe makes a ton on you. That's just the way it is. But anyways, let's get into this story. Adobe has announced Firefly, what it calls the first in a new family of generative AI or artificial intelligence models that are focused on creating images and text effects. It launches in beta today. Like I said, I will put a link to that beta sign up form. All right, so don't worry about it. I'm not gonna put a link on the screen or anything like that. Just go down in the pinned comment as well as the description if you want to get involved in it. The company says that Firefly is made up of multiple models that are, quote, tailored to serve customers with a wide array of skill set and technical backgrounds working across a variety of different use cases. Sounds good to me. Separating itself from other generative AI, Adobe says that its platform wasn't built on the back of stolen images. Instead, it specifically boasts that Firefly has been trained exclusively on Adobe stock images, openly licensed content, and public domain content where copyright has expired. The company says Firefly is focused on images and text effects and is designed to generate content safe for commercial use as well. That's really good for content creators, right? Whenever you create something using an AI platform, is it going to be, let's say, copyright free? Are you going to be able to use it in your works and not have to worry about a strike somewhere down the road? All right, so that's really good. We have a lot of problem with that with music. If you are a content creator, you know all about that. 
Anyways, it continues. Adobe says, quote, Adobe stocks hundreds of millions of professional grade licensed images are among the highest quality of the market and help ensure Firefly won't generate content based on other people's or brands IP or intellectual property. That's good. Quote, Future Firefly models will leverage a variety of assets, technology, and training data from Adobe and others. As other models are implemented, Adobe will continue to prioritize countering potential harmful bias. That's kind of odd. What does that mean? I, I Countering potential harmful bias. Um, that's something very odd to me for them to state that they are going to somehow counter bias. So the question to me would be, who's the one that determines what is harmful or not harmful? And what is the meaning of that? And what is the severity? Anyways, let's continue. Adobe says Firefly is built on a quote, customer centric approach to generative AI and is made specifically to benefit creators and artists by supplementing their skills. I'm happy with that. Specifically, Adobe says that the demand on content creators have grown significantly. They have doubled in the last year, according to a recent Adobe study. The point of Adobe's generative AI is to, quote, ease this burden of demand by creating a system of solutions that allow artists to work faster and with fewer roadblocks. I mean, I'm, I, I like it. I like the narrative here. Do you? I mean, I do. I don't even like Adobe. Quote, Adobe founded the Content Authenticity Initiative, or the CAI, to create a global standard for trusted digital content attribution. With more than 900 members worldwide, the role of CAI has never been more important, Adobe adds, speaking to the way Firefly will not, quote, steal work that it isn't authorized to use. They're really hammering this, hammering it, hammering it. Why? Because they got called out the last time. I called them out, matter of fact, in video. Once again, maybe I'll put a link over here or I did already. Go watch that video, all right? They actually did do what they said they didn't do. It is what it is, it's in black and white, but now they're taking it back, all right? And what they're trying to do is make sure that everyone feels comfy cozy that they will not use anyone's information when building out this Firefly. And chances are, after they get called out on this, they don't want a lawsuit, chances are they won't, all right? Which is a good thing. Quote, Adobe is pushing for open industry standards which include a universal do not train content credential tag. This is very cool because then if you put this into your work, into your image, into your songs, whatever, do not train, whatever this tag will be, then the AI models will say, oh, we can't use this for training. I don't mind that, it's a pretty cool idea. The content credentials tag will remain associated with the content wherever it is used, published, or stored. In addition, AI-generated content will be tagged accordingly. So that's good too. So you know if something was generated with AI, it has the tag associated with it, and then no one thinks that, oh, that was made by a human. It wasn't, it was made by AI. That's not a bad thing either. Earlier this year, Adobe was accused of auto-enabling content analysis quote, content analysis section of its privacy and personal data collection permissions so that it could use any photographer's work to train its AI. And that once again is what I did that video on in the past. And it was absolutely the case. We went right into the TOS, right into that terms of service and dug right into the nitty gritty of that privacy and personal data collection information. And sure damn enough, it does say that it could use it. Matter of fact, it was written like this, quote, Adobe may analyze your content using techniques such as machine learning, e.g. for pattern recognition to develop and improve our products and services. So this is black and white. This was what was actually in that terms of service. The actual permission information read like this, quote, Adobe may analyze your content using techniques such as machine learning, e.g. for pattern recognition, to develop and improve our products and services. That's pretty much as straightforward as you're gonna get, right guys? 
Adobe vehemently denies these claims, saying it did not use any data stored in any customer's Creative Cloud account to train experimental generative AI. Did they, did they not? I don't know. We have to take their word for it. But that verbiage was in that TOS. That verbiage was in there that you sign off on when you signed up with the Creative Cloud. I guarantee you it is no longer there, right? It's not. So did they use it? Did they not? You be the judge. So after reading this article and thinking about what this Firefly thing is, is it going to be good or is it not going to be good? I don't know. But I do like the essence behind it. I do like that it'll allow you to create AI-based content that will be 100% usable by you, the creative, in any possible commercial use or on your YouTube channel or on a podcast or whatever. It will be 100% copyright free or copyright to you. You can now use it without having to worry about it. I do like that. I do also like that they are pushing this do not train tag with the CAI. I think that's excellent. I think that's something that they should do. I think that, that moving forward it should be done. And also a tag that says this content was produced with AI. Now, I also think that there should be a percentage to that AI. So maybe partial AI, full AI, or no AI. So you get an idea if it's one, the other, or the other thing. So you know what's going on. Because if you're creating some type of composition and some of, let's say the background of your image is created with AI, then it could be partial AI. But if you did a whole bunch of additional compositing on top of that background with foregrounds and maybe some of your painting and this and that, well, what is it going to be labeled as? It can't be AI and it can't be not AI at all. It would have to be something in the middle. So I think they need to add a little bit more of a gradient to this AI. What is used, what's not used, and how much of it is used. I think that would be good. So for the most part, I do like what's going on here. I do like what they're doing. Like I said, is it going to be good? Is it not? That is yet to be seen. Now, you know, I don't use Adobe software at all. I don't like Adobe. They do try to get you to believe that they're nice guys. They're agnostic. They look at everything equally and so on and so forth. But basically, this is puffery, right? They state things that make you feel good. And then later on, they kind of give it to you from behind. Something like that. You know what I mean. So... Once again, I am not a fan of Adobe, but I will be signing up for this beta program. If I get in, I am going to use it, and then I'm gonna report back to you, and I'll let you know what I think about it. So, I want you to do the same. Once again, down below, I will put that link, and go there, sign up for it, and then according to what they said on the page is we will get back to you. So they'll probably take an X number of people to beta test this, and it'll probably be based on how you fill out the survey. The survey that you have to take to get on this list is pretty extensive. It's pages and pages. Just take the survey, answer it however you wish, but maybe they use that information to decide how many people in each category get the beta. Who knows? Once again, my personal opinion is I think that it sounds fantastic, but how it really will end up, I really don't know. I do like that being called on the carpet the last time and them having to walk it back, that whole thing where we know that they explicitly said that they were able to use our photographs, now having to walk that back and they're very now vigilant to make sure that they will not do anything like this. And chances are they probably won't at this point because they did get called out. You know how that works. Anyways, in the comment area below this video, let's have this discussion. I wanna know what you think about it. Is Firefly something that you would use or not? Let me know. If you enjoyed this video, even the least, throw it a thumbs up, that'd be great. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click this little button, all those things. If you wanna say thank you, once again, there's a thank you button down there, that would be awesome. And finally, don't forget to head over to my website, jchristina.com. There's a lot of helpful tools I've created for photographers like you and me, even videographers. Those tools I've created over the last decade, some of them are used all around the world. Check them out. If something interests you, pick it up and support me and my family. That would be awesome. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Many blessings to you and your family. We'll see you in the next one. Love you all.